I mean, Fujimiya is a good-for-nothing slob who never cleans his room and smells like rotten fish. However, his worthless life finally gets a purpose when he becomes friends with the most popular girl in his class who also happens to live next door. Now tied with a cute and tidy Maharu, Amin has to change his lifestyle so he can get laid. Their initial interaction happens on a rainy day, when Amin encounters Maharu sitting on a swing in the park without an umbrella. Despite being told to move his sorry bottoms out of there, he generously offers her his umbrella, initiating their first interaction. The next day, Amin shows his inferior genes by catching a cold, prompting his friend Itsuki to comment on his selflessness in giving away his umbrella. When Maharu arrives in class, Amin secretly wishes he was in her pants and mentions how she is admired by many in their class. After school, Maharu visits Amin to return his umbrella and asks to repay the favor. Despite Amin acting like a tough giga chat, he collapses due to fever and Maharu decides to spare her precious time for this pathetic loser. She prepares rice porridge for him, but when she is unable to bear the smell of rotten fish in his room, she decides to play the maid and leaves to clean it. Later, as they spend time together, Amin learns that Maharu was trying to clear her head when he found her in the park. He enjoys their time together but knows she won't even consider someone as ugly as him once he recovers. However, despite his recovery, Maharu continues to bring him leftover food every day, starting an unusual relationship between them. As their dynamic continues, Maharu urges Amain to change his pathetic lifestyle. The next day, Amain and Maharu run into each other at the supermarket, and he offers to carry her groceries home in hopes of getting some plot. Seeing that the state of his apartment is worse than the state of his love life, Maharu later helps Amain clean, who suggests ordering pizza. Maharu reveals that she never ordered food from outside since her family was well off and had a cook at home. As they bond over food and cleaning, Maharu admits that giving Amain leftovers is for her own satisfaction. Despite their differences in lifestyle, they form a unique bond based on mutual care and understanding. As dusk settles, Amin discovers Maharu sitting disheartened in the park. She reveals she tried to rescue a cat stuck in a tree and sprained her ankle. Amin returns with medical supplies and treats her injury, then lends her his sweater to conceal her identity as they wouldn't want the paparazzi to catch wind of her daring exploits as he carries her home. The following day at school, Maharu returns Amin's sweater, probably because it smelled like poop, and gives him a new food box. They discuss Yuda and their own popularity, and then talk about the meal Maharu prepared, including Korok. Amin expresses he's been dreaming of sinking his teeth into freshly made Korok, and Maharu offers to cook for him if he shares the cost, to which Amin agrees. The next day, Maharu takes over Amin's kitchen, turning it into a cooking battleground. They feast on her creations, and Amin, playing the housewife, offers to wash dishes. Maharu, sensing an opportunity, proposes to cook for him regularly, and he eagerly accepts, foreseeing a future filled with delicious meals and a sink full of dirty dishes. At school, Itsuki plays matchmaker, urging Amin to find a girlfriend, but Amin, feeling like a fish out of water, is less than enthusiastic. When Itsuki's girlfriend, Chidos, swoops in with her own brand of enthusiasm, expressing her eagerness to befriend Amain's hypothetical girlfriend, Amain can't help but feel a shiver of apprehension, remembering Chidos's tendency to cling like a koala. Later, Amain finds Maharu's student ID, revealing her upcoming birthday. He randomly asks her what she would like as a gift, and she requests a sharpening stone with fine grit. Days later, Amin seeks advice on birthday presents for Maharu, ultimately settling on hand cream and a stuffed bear. Although Maharu is initially taken aback by Amin's awareness of her birthday, she appreciates the thoughtful gesture. One day, Amin's mother, Shihoko, makes an unexpected visit to her son's apartment, catching him off guard. She immediately notices the tidiness of his home and his clear complexion. Amin, hoping to avoid any awkwardness, hides Maharu in his room and tries to prevent his mother from entering. Despite his efforts, Shihoko finds dishes for two in the strainer and insists on checking his room. There, she discovers Maharu and assumes she is Amin's girlfriend. Sheepishly, Maharu introduces herself, and Shihoko, in a friendly manner, thanks her for supporting Amin. After Shihoko leaves, Amin apologizes for his mother's behavior, feeling like he's just survived a near-miss disaster. Maharu brushes it off and holds Shihoko in high regard, especially since she addressed her by her first name, something Maharu's own parents never did. They decide to address each other by their first names publicly, signifying a deeper connection. After the finals, Amin ranks 21st while Maharu claims first place, leaving him in her scholarly shadow like a dim bulb next to a shining star. 
To celebrate, Amin buys Maharu a strawberry shortcake, which they share. Amin decides to improve his cooking skills and, under Maharu's supervision, attempts to make an omelette and a vegetable dish. Maharu encourages him to keep trying, demonstrating the difference with an omelette she prepares. Later, Chidos tries to convince Amin to host a pizza party, assuming Maharu is his girlfriend because of a stuffed animal Amin bought for her. Feeling guilty for leaving Maharu alone on Christmas Eve, Amin invites her to spend the day with him and she agrees, suggesting they play video games. On Christmas Eve, Chidos and Itsuki have a pizza party at Amain's apartment. As they enjoy the evening, it begins to snow, and they head to the balcony. They are shocked to discover that the girl Amain is looking to bang just lives next door. Gathered around Amain's coffee table, Amain, Maharu, Itsuki, and Chidos discuss Maharu being Amain's neighbor. Itsuki jokingly suggests that Maharu is like Amain's wife in training. A notion both Maharu and Amain deny. Amain asks Itsuki and Chidos to keep their relationship private, to which they agree. Chidos showers Maharu with compliments, until Amain, sensing a potential eruption of flattery-induced enthusiasm, gently intervenes. After apologizing, Chidos asks Maharu to be her friend, and Maharu accepts. They discuss Maharu's cooking hobby, which Chidos also enjoys. Later, Amain apologizes to Maharu for the encounter with Chidos and Itsuki, but she brushes it off. Maharu then brings out the beef stew she prepared, suggesting they have it for lunch the next day along with Amuris. They enjoy the meal together, and while doing the dishes, Amain asks Maharu about her cooking skills, which she learned from her caretaker. Maharu shares a touching moment about cooking for someone who makes you happy. The next day, Amain and Maharu decide to tackle the two most important activities known to humankind, lunch and video games. Amain accidentally gets too touchy while helping Maharu in a game but apologizes, to which Maharu is unfazed. Later, Maharu falls into Amain's lap while playing a racing game, causing a brief moment of embarrassment. That night, Amain loses the game, proving he's still a loser, and gives Maharu a key case as a Christmas present for winning. Maharu appreciates the gift and gives Amain a thick black scarf in return. They spend the rest of the night on the balcony. The next day, Maharu appears to have a cold, but she denies it. Amain insists she rests, and she falls asleep in his room. The following day, Maharu feels better but is still groggy, so Amain stays with her until she falls asleep, confessing that she is bad for his heart. On New Year's, Amain and Maharu watch Buddhist monks ring the temple bell on TV to welcome the new year. They respond to New Year's texts, and Amain's father asks if they can visit in a couple of days, to which Amain agrees like the pushover he is. As Maharu falls asleep on Amain's shoulder from exhaustion after preparing their New Year's dinner, Amain lets her rest in his bed while he takes the couch. The next day, Amain finds Maharu still asleep and gently wakes her up. There's a tender moment when Maharu, still half asleep, asks if Amain likes touching her cheeks when she sleeps, to which he blushingly denies. Later, Amin's parents, Shihoko and Shudo, arrive, and Shihoko is delighted to see Maharu still hasn't dumped her loser son who even she can't love. She gives Maharu a kimono and insists they visit the shrine. Although Amin is hesitant, Shihoko's insistence persuades him to agree. At the temple, Shudo compliments Amin and has a heart-to-heart -heart with him, expressing his happiness about Amin's move. Shihoko surprises them by dressing Maharu in the kimono. They pray and get their fortunes, and Amain curiously asks what Maharu prayed for. She replies that she prayed for health, safety, and peaceful days like the ones they experience daily. Maharu shares her red bean soup with Amain, and they enjoy sweet sake together. That night, Maharu and Amain reflect on the pleasant dinner with Amain's parents. Amain, feeling particularly sentimental, decides to gently pat Maharu's head. However, Maharu, mistaking this gesture for an attempt to tame a wild animal, panics and dashes back to her apartment. The following day, Amin sees his parents off with Maharu, promising to visit in the summer. At school, a rumor spreads that Maharu has a boyfriend. Itsuki playfully teases Amin but is told to keep moving his butt. Back at Amin's apartment, Amin feels uncomfortable with the idea of someone as filthy as him being called Maharu's boyfriend. But Maharu disagrees listing his positive traits. The next day, Chidos pays Amain a visit to his apartment seeking advice for Valentine's Day, hoping to make it special for Itsuki. Amain gets blue balls discussing this with Maharu present. When Chidos asks Amain what kind of chocolate he likes, 
He mentions semi-sweet chocolates. She then inquires if Maharu plans and Maharu says girls only since the boys will start drooling like dogs if she gives them chocolates. At school, Yuida receives numerous chocolates from adoring girls, sparking envy among the boys. Itsuki and Amain discuss Yuida's popularity and whether Maharu has made any for Amain. Chidos later gives Amain her chocolates, stating some of them are bitter and spicy which makes it more of a Russian roulette. Later, Amin kindly offers Yuida his spare bag to carry his abundance of chocolates home. After a few days, Amin tries Chidos's chocolates and eats a spicy one. Maharu offers him hot cocoa to cleanse his palate, vaguely confirming it's for Valentine's Day. She later leaves a bag of homemade orangettes as a thank you gesture. At school, Yuida expresses gratitude to Amain for the bat, surprising their classmates as to why he would even talk to this filthy loser. Later, Itsuki and Amain discuss Itsuki's future with Chidos with the two of them planning to marry each other. Itsuki jokingly suggests Amain might one day propose to Maharu, but Amain dismisses the idea. Returning home, Amin thanks Maharu for her chocolates, leading to a heartfelt conversation about their gratitude for each other's support. Maharu gets flustered when Amin reveals his birthday and decides to celebrate it this year. For White Day, Amin surprises her by dressing like a presentable human and gives Maharu a flower chain bracelet and a do-whatever-you-want ticket. Maharu asks Amain to put the bracelet on her wrist, which he gladly does. A few days later, Amin shares his White Day experience with Itsuki who suggests Amain might be developing feelings for Maharu. Back at the apartment, Amain finds Maharu dressed in an apron like a housewife and expresses concern over her disapproval of his fries outing with Itsuki. Maharu counters by mentioning Amain's stick figure body and how she prefers her pet a little thick. The next day, Itsuki asks to stay at Amin's place after an argument with his father about Chidos. Later, Maharu greets Itsuki warmly and prepares dinner for them. Itsuki comments on Amin's kindness towards Maharu, suggesting he has feelings for her. Itsuki also mentions the school's perception of Amin as antisocial but believes Maharu respects him deeply. The next day, Chidos learns Itsuki stayed over and ate Maharu's food, so she decides to come over and annoy them with her unbearable presence. Despite Amin's initial disapproval, Maharu agrees and they decide to have Amuris, as per Chidos's request. During lunch, Chidos compliments Maharu's cooking but notes her initial impression of Maharu as aloof. She appreciates Maharu's cute and innocent side and suggests Maharu could tame Amin with her sweetness, which Maharu denies. That night, Chidos sends Amin a picture of Maharu with the teddy bear in her pajamas, making his sausage face north. Itsuki sends Chidos a picture of Amin in return so she can show it to Maharu. The next day, Itsuki and Chidos leave, and Amain and Maharu discuss Chidos's picture. Maharu feels embarrassed about her childlike conversation regarding her teddy bear, and receives a text she doesn't want to discuss. Later, Amain overhears Maharu arguing with a woman who turns out to be her mother. Amain invites a disheartened Maharu to stay with him, where Maharu confides her parents never intended to raise her, leaving her feeling unwanted. She reveals her mother's hurtful words and her fear of being cut off after college. Amin, hoping to develop some plot, assures her of his support, leading to a heartfelt moment where Maharu asks to be held. The two then go for a walk and Maharu hugs Amin from the back, probably to feel his premium jayat. The second year classroom assignments are released, and Amin finds himself in class 2 along with Itsuki, Chidos, Maharu and Yuyuda. Despite the familiar faces, a brief interaction with Yuyuda triggers a painful memory for Amain, which he tries to dismiss when asked if he's alright. Back at his apartment, Maharu notices Amain acting like a toddler who didn't get his favorite candy and asks if he's okay, commenting that his hair looks like it would feel nice to touch. Amain, feeling uneasy but curious, allows Maharu to run her fingers through his hair as he puts his head between her thighs. As they share this intimate moment, Maharu expresses her hope that Amain would speak up more. They discuss their upcoming class arrangement and decide to avoid interacting with each other during class, probably because Maharu would lose her popularity if she's seen with someone as miserable as him. Amain eventually becomes drowsy, and Maharu suggests he rest his head on her lap which he does for an hour. The following day, Amin visits the arcade and returns home with a bag full of stuffed animal prizes. Maharu takes a liking to a bunny plushie and offers Amin a favor in return for it. Holding his desire to ask for some sloppy head, he requests homemade pudding with lots of eggs. Maharu shops for eggs and makes the pudding, which Amin finds delicious. When he compliments her for cooking meals every day, stating that it is the highlight of his day, Maharu, in her usual overacting, gets embarrassed and tucks herself away. 
The next day at school, Yuyuta invites Amain and Itsuki to lunch, expressing his desire to befriend Amain despite his loser status in the class. As they agree to a new friendship, Amain notices Maharu looking disapprovingly at him as she sits with Chidos. At Amain's apartment, Maharu confesses her envy of Amain's friendships with others at school but quickly realizes she's acting like a witch. Despite being a little jealous, she expresses her hope for Amain to gain more self-confidence. In the end, they decide to interact casually in school, so Maharu doesn't feel left out. The following day, Maharu, Chidos, Itsuki, and Amain work together on a cooking assignment. They prepare miso soup with green onions and scrambled eggs, and Amain intervenes when a classmate almost splashes hot soup on Maharu. That night, Maharu and Amain have a heart-to-heart -heart about her efforts to get closer to him at school. During Golden Week, Maharu uses her Do Anything You Want ticket and asks Amain to spend a day with her. Amain initially feels it's unnecessary to use the ticket for this since they go shopping anyway, but Maharu insists, and he agrees. They plan to shop, visit a cat cafe, and play at an arcade. Later, Chidos visits and learns to cook from Maharu. While Amin dozes off on the couch, he later wakes up beside Maharu, suspecting a prank by Chidos. After she leaves, Maharu confesses to playfully touching him while asleep, which would also explain why his pants were wet. The two share a tender moment before discussing Maharu's outfit for their outing. The next day, Maharu is worried about her outfit, but he reassures her that he's still way out of her league. They go to a cat cafe, where Maharu feels sad when a cat doesn't show affection. Amain cheers her up, and they enjoy a cat-themed coffee. Later, they hold hands as they walk through the mall and stop at a dress store. As they continue their day, Maharu visits an arcade where she wins a cat doll and gives it to Amain. Later, Yuyuta mistakes them for a couple, but Maharu clarifies their relationship. At the train station, Amain apologizes for the potential trouble she can get into for being with someone as ugly as him but Maharu says it was bound to happen now or later. The next day, Amain hangs out with Yuyuta and Itsuki at a karaoke bar. Itsuki comments on Amain and Maharu's relationship, likening it to a wife in training, which Amain denies. Despite this, Yuyuta suggests being open about his feelings for Maharu. Later, Maharu reveals Amain's mother sent her pictures of him when he was a kid, leading to an embarrassing moment between them. Sitting together on the couch, Maharu casually asks Amain about his plans for Mother's Day, but their conversation takes a deeper turn as Amain shares his past experiences. He reveals how he was betrayed by so-called friends in junior high, probably because his breath stank, which led him to struggle with trust and ultimately move out on his own. Maharu expresses her anger at what Amain endured and offers her unwavering support, insisting that he doesn't have to bear his pain alone. They share a heartfelt moment, with Maharu shoving Amain's face in her melons and encouraging him to confide in her whenever he needs to. Feeling uneasy, Amain tries to push her away but finds himself drawn back to Maharu, ultimately embracing her from behind as they discuss their perceived selfishness. The next day, Amain begins jogging to build some muscle. While at school, he overhears Maharu discussing their outing with a couple of girls. Later, at his apartment, Maharu reaffirms to Amain that she considers him her closest friend. Amin reveals his recent training endeavors, surprising Maharu, who offers him a gift in return for his dedication. That night, Amin has a wet dream about Maharu and begins to avoid her. He brushes off her worries, but Maharu confronts him about his behavior, leading to a candid conversation about the dream Amin had involving her. Despite her curiosity, Maharu respects Amin's boundaries, grateful for their innocent relationship. As midterm exams approach, Amain invites Maharu to join a study party with Itsuki and Yuyuta. They share a tender moment as Maharu promises to fulfill any request Amain makes if he achieves his academic goal. In his hunger for some plot, Amain places sixth among the top 30 students in the first term exam. Maharu congratulates him and suggests he treat himself, but she declines any reward for herself despite placing first. That evening, at Amain's apartment, Maharu asks for a reward by having Amain help her prepare cucumbers, which he reluctantly agrees to. Later, Maharu cleans Amain's ears as his reward for making the top 10. Amain enjoys it but gets flustered when she plays with his hair afterward. After some time, Amain wakes up in Maharu's lap, who herself fell asleep. He tries waking her up but ends up carrying her back to her apartment, where she asks him to join her. Amain, who probably already jizzed his pants, refuses and leaves a teddy bear next to her as a substitute. 
The next day, Maharu visits Amain at his apartment and asks if he saw the picture on her desk, which of course he didn't because he was too busy staring at her talents. Later, Amain plays basketball with Yuyuta and Itsuki while Maharu and Chidos watch. The following morning, Maharu asks Amain for his opinion on her summer outfit, and he advises her to wear stockings since he's most likely to cause an incident in his pants if he sees her bare-legged. After school, Amain agrees to watch a movie with Yuyuta but helps Maharu staple sports day printouts instead when she's assigned the task. They overhear girls speaking ill of Maharu, which upsets Amain. That evening, Maharu and Amain discuss the gossip about her and her true personality. Maharu admits she sometimes tires of acting angelic and good-natured but won't change consciously yet. Amain shares his concern about how others will perceive Maharu if she changes. Maharu then compliments Amain, leading to an intimate moment between them. Sitting on Amain's couch, Maharu admits to him that she sees something special in him. Surprised, Amain covers Maharu's mouth, warning her that the next time she says that, he won't use his hand to shut her up. When he releases her, Maharu kisses Amain on the cheek and runs like she shat her pants, leaving Amain shocked by the encounter. The next day at school, Chidos asks Maharu about her plans for the upcoming sports day, and Maharu expresses her interest in the scavenger hunt. When Amain enters the classroom, Itsuki notices he's acting like a bee towards Maharu. During lunch, Itsuki, Amain, and Yuyuta sit together and Itsuki asks Amain about his relationship with Maharu. Amain explains what happened between them, and after hearing his side, Itsuki and Yuyuta share their two cents on the matter. Later that afternoon, Maharu joins Amain on his couch and apologizes for her behavior. Amain brushes it off, and Maharu sits beside him. Amain questions Maharu about her actions, and she explains that she either got carried away or wanted to get back at him, citing a past incident where Amain had done something similar to her. Although reluctant, Amain admits to his past actions. After the events of Sports Day, Maharu defends Amain's character to some boys from their class and asks Amain to have lunch with her. That evening, Amain and Maharu have a conversation on the couch. Maharu apologizes for her actions earlier, and Amain apologizes for being a coward. In a tender moment, they both admit their feelings for each other and recall all the times they've spent together. Eventually, Amain grows a pair and asks Maharu to be his girlfriend, to which she agrees. The two embrace and Amain promises to become a better man for her, ending their tale on a positive note. And that brings an end to this story. Do you guys think Amain and Maharu are a good couple? Let us know down below and like always, don't forget to like and subscribe for a blessed husbando or a waifu.